an unfolding economic crisis uh, within our own economies, which is triggered by the massive redirection of resources to the military-industrial complex and the war economy. Um, we, we can see it happening. There's a run on the dollar. Uh, we, uh, we, we can see the tremendous shift from, civilian sec from the civilian sectors into the military. The, the, the implications of this of this uh, war economy on social, on social services is, is likely to be absolutely devastating. Uh, we, we can see also massive budget deficits accumulating due to the, uh, to, due to the expansion of military budgets. Uh, and uh, contrary to the 1930s, because I think we have to also start comparing with other, comparing this situation with that of the 1930s in Germany. Okay? This is a movement towards fascism. It's a slide towards fascism. It is supported on the it's militar, militarization on the outside, internationally. Inside, it is the establishment of the police state. Uh, under the Patriot legislation. Uh, this police state apparatus is unfolding, um, and uh, in fact, what you have is the militarization of civilian institutions. Uh, we brought out a very interesting study in the, in the magazine which has to do with the fact that in the United States, they're repealing legislation which prevents the military from entering into the spheres of civilian police and justice. It's called the Posse Comitatus Act. It goes back to the Civil War. It's a very fundamental principle that the Pentagon, that the military do not intervene in, in, the, in police functions or in, uh, in the judicial. And what is happening is that this legislation is being repealed and we are now seeing the militarization of civilian institutions. So that de facto we have we have a military government in the United States, let's face it, because George W. is not the person who is pulling the strings. His understanding of foreign policy is very limited. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what the standards are in, in, at McMaster University, but I, I guess they're the same as they are at the U of O, but um, well, maybe higher. But in any event, uh, George W. would not have made uh, his uh, honors uh, BA in, in international affairs at, at any Canadian university with this kind of perspective. The, the, the guy does not know where Afghanistan is, okay? And he is briefed on a daily basis by CIA director George Tenet. We talk about political puppets. Well, we have... We have these public relations puppets, and, and quite frankly, I prefer George W. to Wesley Clark, okay? I mean, if, if I had to choose, if, if it ever came down to that, because Wesley Clark is actually a very much more astute military man which, uh, who is responsible for war crimes in, 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 in the Balkans, for having ordered the destruction of civilian, civilian infrastructure, hospitals, schools, we, we have it well documented that Wesley Clark is, is a war criminal and George W. is just a puppet. Now, how does all this relate to September 11? Okay. Well, it relates in a very direct way because in every political statement by the Bush administration, 9-11 is, is the justification for waging these wars. It's the, it's the war on terror. And the war on terror is part of the national security doctrine. And the war on terror, the campaign against, the military campaign against Afghanistan was decided on the evening of 
on September 11, at 11 o'clock at night, they had decided to wage war on Afghanistan, and the justification and the pretext was that Al-Qaeda had attacked the World Trade Center. If you go through the documents and the, and the chronology discussed in my book, where I provide the a review of the meetings which were held on that, on that evening, that decision was made, was probably made several years before, because you don't simply improvise the war in Afghanistan from one month to the next, okay? But let's say that the, the, it was made public uh, on September 11, or at least in the morning papers of September 12, and it was, and the, and the, and the news dispatches were sent out mythical figure of uh, Osama bin Laden. Everybody says Al-Qaeda is behind these terrorist attacks. And there's a lot of discussion as to whether Al-Qaeda is behind these terrorist attacks. I won't necessarily get into that. But I think what must be understood is that Al-Qaeda is not an outside enemy. Okay? Al-Qaeda is a creation of U.S. foreign policy. And is what the CIA calls an intelligence asset. The Al-Qaeda, which means the, the base, or the, the, orig or the, the origins of Al-Qaeda, go back to the Soviet-Afghan war. It was a CIA initiative to recruit Islamic brigades setting up the madrasas, the, in other words, the Quranic schools, the training camps in Afghanistan in the context of the Soviet-Afghan war. This was a Cold War initiative. It was launched under the presidency of Jimmy Carter, for which he got the Nobel Prize. Okay? <laughs> now, um, you might say, so in other words, Jimmy Carter... The Carter administration launched a secret operation. The National Security Advisor was Brzezinski, and they created Al-Qaeda. They created the Islamic Brigades. And Brzezinski doesn't actually deny it. I have an interview here. He says, uh, he, he says yes, it was an excellent idea to, to do that. You know, we, we, uh, we funded the brigades. We brought in the, the, the Wahhabi uh, sects from Saudi Arabia which set up the training camps and, and then it was financed by drug money and so on and so forth. All this is documented. Actually, nobody even within the CIA will actually deny it. But the official story is he went against us. We supported Osama. We supported Al-Qaeda. It was for a worthy cause. It was during the Cold War. And in the post-war era, Al-Qaeda has turned on its sponsors. In intelligence jargon, that, that is called the blowback. It's when an intelligence asset goes against the, the sponsors, uh, which in this case is the American intelligence apparatus. So that essentially the CIA is the ill-fated victim of this, with Osama going against us. Okay? And that is... The, that is the, in, in a sense, it's a missing link because it, the blowback says, yes, it is an outside enemy. We helped them initially. He went against us. They can't deny the, the historical record. But I can tell you that this is simply a big lie. And it's not so much, I mean, the lie, there's, the lie has got, got to be so big. Um, it's not the question of whether there was foreknowledge. Okay? of the 9-11 attacks. Um, it has to do with the fact that Al-Qaeda is a creature of the CIA and has remained a creature of the CIA right up, right up until the present. And that is simply not, it's not a question again of saying, yes, maybe 
Okay? It, it is something which is so well documented from, the, from official sources. Now, I'm going to read you a quote, and I would like you to guess the source of this quote. Okay? It refers to the early to, to mid-90s in Bosnia-Herzegovina, where, as you know, uh, Al-Qaeda was active in supporting the Bosnian Muslim army, uh, bringing in uh, mujahideen and uh, weapons uh, financed by, this, by uh, various uh, sources, but essentially this was part of Al-Qaeda. And the, the, the report says the following, the Clinton administration's hand-on involvement with Islamic Network's arms pipeline included inspection of missiles by U.S. government officials, the Third World Relief Agency, a Sudan-based phony humanitarian organization, was a major link in the arms pipeline to Bosnia. TWRA is believed to be connected with Osama bin Laden. So there you have the Clinton administration collaborating with an organization which has links to Al-Qaeda. This document was, is a public document, but it was not. They decided to keep, keep it, uh, you know, more or less private to themselves because they wanted to discredit Clinton uh, for his affair with Monica Lewinsky. Okay? And uh, I know that there was discussion within the Republican Party to trigger uh, an Osama gate, a Bosnia gate, uh, Osama scandal, which would then backlash and, uh, on the Clinton administration and accuse Clinton of collaborating with Islamic terrorists. Okay? A bit like the Iran-Contra scandal. Uh, and it was decided within the Republican Party not to pursue that particular cause because that was their cause. That was, their, that was the continuity of foreign policy right from the beginning. Okay? And it could backlash and it would destroy the continuity. So they preferred to go for the easy Monica Lewinsky scandal, which would, uh, which would uh, uh, denigrate uh, and discredit the administration for something which is uh, admittedly not as serious as, as collaborating with, with the terrorists. Okay? But I mean, we have, I, we have numerous... Uh, evidence. We have many points of evidence of collaboration between uh, agencies of the U.S. government, the military and intelligence in particular, on the one hand, and uh, and the Al Qaeda network. Uh, and uh, uh, these do not date back to a bygone era. Now, what's the source of this document? It's the Republican Party. In other words, the Republican Party, it's a 97 do, 1997 document. In 1997, the, the Republican Party was, was accusing the Clinton administration of collaborating with Al-Qaeda.